Hello, friends. It's good to be with you as always. Uh, I'm recording this on early in the week after the weekend when uh, not only Minneapolis but the entire nation um, saw all kinds of um, unusual, unprecedented events uh, moving from peaceful protests and righteous anger uh, to uh, more rioting uh, across the country and certainly here in Minneapolis and St. Paul in the wake of the tragic death of George Floyd. Today, um, I want to bathe our time in prayer and scripture. Uh, there are certainly more practical steps we need to take here, um, both to help rebuild the city of Minneapolis and also to talk about uh, systemic changes around uh, equity and inclusion. But as I mentioned uh, in my sermon on Sunday, and indeed as I talked about the entire service, I'd like us as Christians also to be keeping this entire situation uh, in our um, prayers. And so I want to provide some prayers. I want to provide some resources today. Uh, the first of those actually is the sermon I preached uh, this past Sunday. We'll pro provide a link uh, to that if you haven't had a chance to listen to it where I talk uh, in a little more detail about how we might think of all of these events. Um, and I also am sort of framing my reflections today um, around something that sounds totally unrelated to these events, but uh, in fact turns out uh, to be, I think, um, a path forward in terms of some resources, and that is my own wedding anniversary, uh, which I celebrated with my wife uh, last Saturday. Um, and I want to lift up uh, as, again, a way forward a couple of things from that service. The first uh, was one of the readings we had, which is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Um, let me just read uh, a few verses from that. This is chapter 3, beginning with verse 12. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And then this beautiful line from Paul, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. So there's language there about unity, uh, one body, and there's the language also uh, about love, which directs us to one of the other resources I want to lift up for you this morning, and this is an op-ed written by Michael Curry, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. This appeared in the Washington Post. And again, he emphasizes in that op-ed um, that we must choose the path of love. And so I commend that um, op-ed to you. We'll provide a link to it in the uh, um, description below. So that's one thing, Colossians leading to that op-ed piece by um, Bishop Michael Curry. The other thing um, that I'm reminded of from our wedding, which we actually posted here at St. Philip the Deacon on our Facebook page, is a famous prayer called, uh, it's sometimes called the Prayer for Peace or the Prayer of St. Francis. Uh, it's a prayer attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, one of the towering um, figures uh, for peace in the history of our tradition. Um, and again, you can find this on Facebook, but I want to just read again as a way to bathe everything that we're going through right now in prayer. I want to read this prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of, of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Grant, dear Lord, that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Um, a friend of mine, another pastor, uh, added uh, some lines to that prayer and shared them with his congregation, which I also want to lift up uh, here. He wrote, Give us eyes to see what is right and steadfast hearts to do it. Give us minds disciplined to understand those who seem to us incomprehensible. 
Give us voices to speak out for justice and the will to work for it. Give us an unquenchable desire for peace and the commitment to ensure that it is a peace born of equity. Um, that last line, give us an unquenchable desire, references, of course, unquenchable fire. Um, I talked about this and we talked about it in our service this past Sunday, which was the festival of Pentecost, often associated with flames. Um, and our prayer, of course, is that some of the flames we've been seeing over the last few days can be extinguished and replaced with flames of hope and restoration and reconciliation and indeed love. That prayer I just prayed for you or with you uh, that I commend to you is again by St. Francis. Um, the current Pope, you may know this, took his papal name from that man. He's the first Pope ever in the history of Christendom to take the name Pope Francis. And I wanna conclude with a prayer by Pope Francis that also refers again to uh, fire and flame. And here's what Pope Francis uh, invites us to pray. Keep alive within us the flame of hope so that with patience and perseverance we may opt for dialogue and reconciliation. In this way, may peace triumph at last. Lord, diffuse the violence of our tongues and our hands renew our hearts and minds so that our way of life will always be that of shalom and peace. To which we all say, Amen. Thanks as always for joining me. Until next time, be well, stay in touch, and God bless. Mm -hmm.